The Explosion Myth It's tempting to imagine the Big Bang as a fiery detonation, like a bomb in an empty void. This picture suggests matter blasting outward from a single central point into pre-existing emptiness. But the reality is very different. The Big Bang was not an explosion inside space. It was the expansion of space itself. All points in space were once packed into an incredibly hot and dense state, and the distances between them began to grow everywhere at once. This distinction matters. In an explosion, you can trace debris back to a central origin, but in cosmology, there is no such center. Every location in the universe looks roughly the same on the largest scales, a property called homogeneity. The cosmic microwave background, the faint radiation left from the early universe, shows nearly the same temperature in every direction, with only tiny variations. This uniformity matches the idea that expansion happens simultaneously everywhere, not as a blast spreading out into a void. Even the way galaxies recede from one another reflects this difference. The farther away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to recede. That pattern, known as Hubble's Law, is exactly what you expect if space itself is stretching. Imagine dots on the surface of a balloon as it inflates. Each dot sees all others move away, and the more distant dots recede faster. There is no central dot that marks the beginning. Light from distant galaxies also provides evidence. As space expands, the wavelengths of photons traveling through it get stretched, creating the phenomenon known as cosmological redshift. This is not a Doppler effect from objects racing through static space, but a direct imprint of the universe's growth on light itself. So the Big Bang wasn't a single explosion in space. It was the beginning of space, time and expansion everywhere at once. Instant matter. Many imagine that all the matter in the universe simply appeared in a sudden burst at the very start. But the process was far more gradual and governed by the laws of physics. In the earliest fractions of a second, the universe was not filled with matter at all, but with pure energy at unimaginably high density. According to Einstein's equation, energy and matter are interchangeable. As the universe expanded and cooled, energy transformed into particles. At about one microsecond after the Big Bang, the temperature dropped enough for quarks, the building blocks of protons and neutrons, to bind together. A few minutes later, those protons and neutrons began fusing in a process called Big Bang nucleosynthesis, producing the first light elements, mostly hydrogen and helium, with trace amounts of lithium. This period set the basic chemical composition of the cosmos. Yet even then, the universe was still a hot plasma of charged particles and radiation. Photons couldn't travel freely because they constantly scattered off free electrons. Neutral atoms, the kind of matter we recognize today, didn't form until about 380,000 years later. Only at that time during recombination did the universe become transparent, releasing the radiation we now detect as the cosmic microwave background. So matter did not appear in one instant. It unfolded step by step, energy turning into particles, particles assembling into nuclei, and finally, atoms forming once the universe was cool enough. The story of matter is not a single spark, but a long chain of transformations. The single point. It's easy to think of the universe starting from one tiny dot in an otherwise empty expanse, but the Big Bang was not confined to a single location. Instead, it happened everywhere simultaneously. Every region of today's universe was once part of that same hot, dense state. Expansion was not a wave spreading out from a central source. It was the fabric of space itself stretching uniformly. A useful analogy is baking bread with raisins mixed into the dough. As the dough rises, every raisin sees all others moving away. There is no single raisin at the center of the expansion. The same is true of the cosmos. No galaxy or cluster occupies a privileged spot. From any location, the large-scale view looks essentially the same. This is supported by observations. No matter where we look, galaxies appear to be receding, and the rate of expansion follows the same pattern in every direction. The cosmic microwave background also confirms this isotropy. If the Big Bang had been a localized event, we would expect one region of the sky to look hotter or denser than the opposite direction, 
but instead the background is strikingly uniform. So the universe did not begin from a point in space. Rather, space itself was compressed to a state of extreme density and then expanded everywhere at once. That's why cosmologists say the Big Bang happened not at one point, but at all points. Silent Darkness The early universe is sometimes imagined as a silent void, empty of light and sound. The reality was the opposite. The infant cosmos was filled with a hot plasma of particles and radiation, glowing with immense energy. In fact, the universe was once so bright and hot that photons could not travel unimpeded. They scattered constantly in the dense soup of electrons and nuclei. For the first 380,000 years, the universe was opaque, like the inside of a star. Light could not escape in straight lines. It was trapped and diffused. When atoms finally formed and electrons bound to nuclei, photons were suddenly free to travel. That release of light is what we now see as the cosmic microwave background. It has been stretched into faint microwaves by 13.8 billion years of expansion, but it is still detectable in every direction. Even sound waves rippled through the early plasma. These were pressure oscillations, like the ringing of a giant cosmic drum. The imprints of these waves survive today in the distribution of galaxies, in patterns known as baryon acoustic oscillations. Far from being silent, the young universe was full of motion, light, and energy. So the Big Bang was not a dark or quiet event. It was a seething, radiant environment, blazing with heat and sound, leaving behind signals we still measure today. Empty space. This idea assumes that there was a void already present, and that matter expanded outward to fill it. But modern cosmology shows that space and time themselves came into existence during the Big Bang. Matter didn't spread into pre-existing emptiness. Rather, the expansion of space carried matter with it from the start. Space, time, matter, and energy are deeply connected. You cannot separate the fabric of the cosmos from the contents it holds. In general relativity, matter tells space how to curve, and space tells matter how to move. At the Big Bang, both the geometry of space and the material within it emerge together. This is why scientists describe the Big Bang not as an explosion in space, but as the origin of space-time itself. There was no empty container waiting to be filled. Instead, as space unfolded, so did the energy and particles that populate it. Asking where did the Big Bang happen is therefore misleading. The answer is everywhere, because it defined the very coordinates of no evidence. Some skeptics dismiss the Big Bang as mere speculation, calling it just a theory. But in science, the word theory has a very specific meaning. A theory is not a guess. It is a well-tested framework that explains a wide range of observations. The Big Bang theory is supported by multiple independent lines of evidence, all pointing to the same conclusion. Our universe expanded from a hot, dense state billions of years ago. One of the strongest pieces of evidence is the observed redshift of galaxies. When astronomer Edwin Hubble first measured how galaxies' light was shifted toward longer wavelengths, he discovered that the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it is receding. This directly matches predictions from an expanding universe. Another key line of evidence is the cosmic microwave background. First detected in 1965, this faint glow is exactly what you would expect if the universe began in a hot, dense state. It has been measured with extraordinary precision by satellites such as COBE, WMAP, and Planck, showing a nearly uniform temperature across the sky with tiny fluctuations. Fingerprints of the early universe's structure. The relative abundance of elements also confirms the model. Calculations of Big Bang nucleosynthesis precisely predict the amount of hydrogen, helium, and lithium that should exist. Observations of distant gas clouds and ancient stars show the same proportions. Taken together, these observations form a powerful web of evidence. The Big Bang is not a wild idea. It is a tested scientific framework with decades of confirmation from data. Time Zero It's easy to assume that because scientists talk about the Big Bang, they know what happened at the very instant of the universe's birth. But our knowledge does not extend all the way to time zero. Physics as we know it breaks down before a certain threshold. 
our best models can describe the universe back to just seconds after the beginning, known as the Planck time. Before that, the density and temperature of the universe were so extreme that both general relativity and quantum mechanics must be applied together. Unfortunately, we do not yet have a complete theory of quantum gravity to describe those conditions. That means while we can trace the history of the cosmos through its earliest moments of rapid inflation, nucleosynthesis, and the release of the cosmic microwave background, the moment of creation itself remains mysterious. Some models suggest the universe could have emerged from a quantum fluctuation, others that it was preceded by a contracting phase, and others still that time itself may not be meaningful before the Planck time. So while the Big Bang model gives us an extraordinarily detailed picture of the early universe, it does not claim certainty about time zero. The very origin remains one of the deepest open questions in physics. Explains all. The Big Bang model is powerful, but it has limits. It explains how the universe expanded and cooled from a hot, dense beginning. It explains the origin of light elements, the structure of the cosmic microwave background, and the expansion we observe today. But it does not explain everything. For example, the Big Bang does not tell us why the universe exists in the first place. It does not identify what, if anything, caused expansion to begin. Nor does it explain the deeper laws that determine why physics is the way it is. These are questions of initial conditions, the rules and triggers that set the stage for the universe we see. The Big Bang also does not fully address certain puzzles. Why is the universe so uniform across vast distances when distant regions should never have been in contact? Why is space so flat with no significant curvature? Why does the universe contain slightly more matter than antimatter? These questions led to the proposal of cosmic inflation, a burst of exponential expansion in the earliest moments, as well as ongoing research into particle physics. So while the Big Bang is the best model for the evolution of the universe from its earliest hot, dense state, it is not the final answer to every cosmic mystery. It is one piece of the puzzle, not the whole picture. Instant Galaxies A common misconception is that stars and galaxies appeared right after the Big Bang. In truth, the universe went through long, dark ages before the first stars formed. After the Big Bang, the universe cooled enough for atoms to form about 380,000 years later. At this point, matter was spread thinly and evenly. Gravity then began its slow work, pulling regions of slightly higher density together. Over tens of millions of years, these clumps grew into larger structures. The first stars ignited about 100 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. They were massive and short-lived, quickly producing heavier elements and exploding as supernovae. These explosions enrich the surrounding gas, making it possible for later generations of stars to form with a wider variety of elements. Galaxies assembled gradually over hundreds of millions of years. Stars gathered into clusters, clusters merged, and structures on larger scales developed under the pull of gravity. Observations of very distant galaxies allow astronomers to look back in time and watch this process unfold, confirming that stars and galaxies emerged long after the initial expansion. So the Big Bang did not instantly create the structured universe we see today. Instead, it set the stage for gravity and time to build complexity step by step. Sun and Earth Some people mistakenly think our solar system was born in the Big Bang. In reality, the Sun and Earth formed much, much later. The Big Bang occurred 13.8 billion years ago. Our Sun and Earth did not appear until only 4.6 billion years ago. That means the universe had already existed for more than 9 billion years before our solar system took shape. By then, countless stars had already lived and died, enriching space with heavy elements like carbon, oxygen, silicon, and iron elements forged in stellar interiors and supernova explosions. The Sun is a third-generation star, born from the debris of earlier stellar generations. Its surrounding disk of gas and dust gave rise to planets, including Earth. Without the billions of years of cosmic history before it, our planet would not have the chemical ingredients needed for oceans, rocks, or life. So the Sun and Earth are latecomers in the cosmic timeline, products of a long chain of starbirth and death that began billions of years after the Big Bang. The only explanation. 
While the Big Bang is the leading explanation, it is not the only one scientists explore. Science always keeps the door open to alternatives, as long as they can be tested against observations. One alternative is the bouncing universe model, where expansion is not the first event, but the result of a previous contracting phase. Another is eternal inflation, which suggests our universe is just one bubble in a larger multiverse, each bubble with its own laws of physics. Cyclic cosmologies propose that universes may go through endless rounds of birth, expansion, collapse, and rebirth. So far, none of these alternatives has matched the sheer weight of evidence supporting the Big Bang. The observed cosmic microwave background, the abundance of light elements, and the large-scale structure of galaxies are all best explained by Big Bang cosmology. Still, ongoing research explores other models, because the ultimate origin of the universe may be even stranger than we imagine. Time beginning. It is natural to think of the Big Bang as the absolute beginning of time itself. In fact, many scientists frame it this way, because time as we know it cannot be described before the Planck era. But we cannot say with certainty that the Big Bang was truly the beginning. Some theories suggest the Big Bang marked only the start of our observable universe, but not of time itself. In bouncing models, time stretches into the past through cycles of contraction and expansion. In eternal inflation, our universe may be one of many, each budding off from an inflating background that extends indefinitely in both time and space. What we know is that time, as measured by clocks and physical processes, emerges clearly only after the Planck time. Before that, we lack the tools to say whether time existed or what its nature might have been. So while it is possible the Big Bang marked the very beginning of time, it is equally possible that time has a deeper story, with chapters that extend beyond the reach of our current physics. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed watching, please leave a like and subscribe, and let us know in the comments if you would like to see more videos like this one.